welcome to the College Media Order. We join us to stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Thank you, Jim. Welcome. First thing on the agenda is the uh, approval of payroll for April the 19th, 2016. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor, second vote, second aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Motion carried. And the approval of claims March 31st, April 7th, and April 14th, 2016. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor, second vote, second aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, the South District uh, Commissioner has a appointment to the Tourism Board. Are you prepared to make that? Yep. Um, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Kathy Brown. She is um, one of the owners of Valpo Velvet and Valparaiso. Lifetime Porter County resident, and I think she'll be a great addition. Good. Sounds good. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, of signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, do a little deviation from the posted agenda and uh, ask Kurt uh, Gillens to from the Valpo Chamber to come up. I right. Afternoon, Kurt. Good afternoon. I'm actually representing the Arts Committee for the Valparaiso Redevelopment Commission today okay. in the chamber. But uh, we, uh, for the past four years, have done the art walk over by the YMCA um, on Cumberland Drive. And as part of the ABC uh, America's Best Community competition and the Arts District moving that down to uh, Indiana Avenue between Napoleon and uh, Morgan Street. Uh, one of the things that we thought about doing this year is moving a few of those pieces down from the Art Walk to Indiana Avenue, and two of them we would like to put on county property, one being in front of the building here and one in front of the, the uh, Porter County Museum. I did speak with Kevin at the Porter County Museum, and he is okay with it there. And uh, I brought pictures of the two pieces that we would put or down here. Kind of reminiscent of the old dog thing, huh? <laughs> uh, you know, the, the first piece was chosen specifically because it's called Rescue Me, and I thought with the, the tie into the new animal shelter that's in, in the works, it would be a great addition. Um, this one would go, we would like it to go on the concrete pad in front of the building here at the corner, kind of facing the amphitheater. And it is about four foot tall and eight foot wide, and it would be on a on a cement pad that is brought in. Great. Good. Anyone else curious? <laughs> Where would the other one? The other one would go in the lawn in front of the Porter County Museum on the east side of the sidewalk. They have an exhibit that they're putting on the west side, so he said it would be great as long as it was on the east side. Questions? You don't have any problem with that, do you, Scott, for the opera house being on the east side? And the installation of these would be within the next two weeks. Okay. And they would be up for a year. Okay. I make a motion to approve putting these art pieces on county property for the art walk. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, same by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kurt. Uh, Attorney Dave Hollenbeck, approval of the West Porter Township Fire Protection District creation of the Cumulative Firefighting Fund. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, David. How are you? With me is Chuck Murray, who is the chairman of the Fire Protection District uh, in West Porter Township. Good As afternoon, I indicated sir. in my April 11th letter to you, the Fire Protection District fell victim uh, to problems that developed as we transitioned. Uh, as a non-elected board, you make the appointments to the board. Um, they are now required to have their budget, tax rate, and levy approved by the county council. Um, as that transition occurred through the previous auditor's office, uh, some things fell through the cracks. And to make a long story short, uh, the Fire Protection District uh, for one year had no tax rate at all. Uh, DLGF would not approve it. Uh, and they survived that. They now have uh, reinstated for this year uh, their general firefighting fund, but they, for many years, going back to 2000, 
that had a cumulative improvement firefighting fund where they accumulate money to buy equipment and uh, other things that they need for fire protection in West Border Township. In order to get that reinstated, uh, we have to come back to the Board of County Commissioners under the law and ask you to approve us going forward uh, to create the cumulative fund. Uh, and we're not asking that it, anything change other than it get reinstated uh, and it has been in place for 14 years and uh, we're trying to get that reinstated. It's obviously critically important to providing adequate fire protection to the Lake of the Four Seasons side, uh, Porter County side of the Lake of the Four Seasons. What's happened to the funds in the interim? Are they just sitting in the bank or are they... No, we, we were denied. We got no money at all no. two years ago. Not a dime. We had to survive without any money. Uh, last This year now, we've been able to reinstate the general fund. We didn't need county commissioner approval to do that under the DLGF guidelines. But to reinstate a cumulative fund, which we had for 15 years, uh, we have to go back and recreate it. We're going to start doing that uh, at a May 9th meeting that we're going to have. But in the interim, DLGF wants the appointing authority to acquiesce in the recreation of what was already had been there for 15 years. Questions? Is there a motion? This is just um, creating funds, right? Reestablishing the rate for the fund that's already in place but does not have a levy or a tax rate, the CUNE fund. All right, I'll make the motion. Motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor, second by saying aye. 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 The the same sign. Aye. Motion carries two to one. Uh, I provided you with a form of resolution. Uh, hopefully you've got that and can execute it because I need to send that down with the packet. We'll do signatures at the end of the meeting unless uh, do you have it on top there and Ron? We can have it. do it and let you have it now, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. I'll make a copy and then Oh, Okay, uh, from DLZ. Gonna do an animal shelter update. Stephen, how are you? Good. Afternoon. Afternoon. <coughs> Stephen Kronkowski with DLC. I just wanted to give a brief update on the animal shelter. Uh, we did. Uh, we've gone through uh, two portions of the process so far. We've received the qualitative, um, the qualifications. Uh, we've windled that down. There was three that uh, we ended up pursuing with the. Uh, request for proposal. That information has been received. It's in the process of being reviewed. We conducted interviews of the three firms. Uh, the three firms uh, design builders uh, was Core Construction, uh, Gary Up, and Larson Danielson are the three teams. Um, we're in the process. The technical review committee is in the process of uh, providing the quantity or the uh, the criteria and the rating for them. Um, after that is uh, completed, then we open up uh, the actual uh, lump sum bid proposals that they have. Uh, and then there's a mathematical formula uh, to find out the, um, the adjusted, the lowest adjusted price um, uh, firm. And so you're basically getting the best value uh, from the, uh, the qualifications and then also the best value for the cost itself. So that process. Uh, is underway. Um, we do need to have seven days public notice when you are opening up the bid, uh, the bids. Um, and so you'll we'll probably have the next next commissioner's meeting. I don't know if that's be um, could potentially be doing that uh, on 
You need the 28th, is that correct? Yeah. Well, we we're, 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 we're going to we're talk about that later. Yeah, so, John is going to. So we do need to know when that next meeting is because it does need to be advertised uh, or at least noticed to those firms seven days in advance is how the state statute reads. So. With, with the uh, scheduled next meeting being on election day, we're going to back up and our next meeting will be May the 10th. May 10th. So that will be fine once uh, we have all those. We'll notify the uh, design builders uh, that that will be the date um, that we'll be reading those, opening those proposals. So that's the next step. Okay. Uh, and then once we have that, we'll go under a tentative award of contract to the design builder, um, to that successful firm, and then we'll enter into uh, final negotiations before a final signed contract and dollar amount is established. There's parameters uh, that each design builder will have, and so you want to solidify that. Uh, before you have a, a final dollar. Very good. So that's where we are today. Great. Okay. Questions, statements, concerns? <laughs> Three designs are, they look good. It's exciting. We should it's some good choices. We morning going through interviews, and so we understood not only just the document, but they were able to present uh, their approach and um, the design elements that they felt was important to the project. So it's exciting. Signing the piece here. You're not moving ground yet, but you're close. So. Very good. All right. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Lorelei Weimer, Indiana Dunes Tourism Update. Good afternoon, Lorelei. Good afternoon. Did everybody get one of these today? What's that? Did everybody get one of these? We did, and there's still more in the back if somebody came in and did get one. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you for allowing me to be on your agenda today. Um, like I did last year, I just wanted to present a, a year in review and then also take a peek at what we're doing in 2016. Uh, first of all, just to remind people that tourism is an economic driver for our area, and a lot of people don't realize that there are 6.3 million people that visit annually. Three million of those visitors are going to the Indiana Dunes, and we import $386 million annually because of that visitor spending, which is significant. Our job is to attract new and repeat visitors and extend their stay. The goal is to get the visitors to stay as long as we can, get them out into our communities to spend money. We have four key strategic goals that drive everything we do. It's branding and marketing, internal and external communications, product development, and finance and administration. Uh, last year, uh, we tweaked our brand. Um, it's Indiana Dunes, Beaches, and Beyond. The Beaches and Beyond is what has changed. Uh, the Beyond is critical because people are coming for our beaches and that dunes experience, but we need to get them into our community, so the Beyond part was critical. So we tweaked our brand, and that's been launched this year. Um, what's driving visitors and what's putting, pe putting us on the map is clearly the Indiana Dunes. You know, like I said earlier, 3 million people are coming to the Dunes. 80% of those are from outside of Northwest Indiana. 60% of those are from outside of Indiana. So we are truly driving visitation because of the Dunes. This gives you an overview of our advertising is basically 100% digital. Digital allows us to get people to our website to request publications, to watch videos, um, to go to our landing pages, and it's very trackable. Uh, what you see at the top are the different campaigns that we had. We are doing search engine marketing. We are doing retargeting ads. We're doing Facebook prospecting ads. We're doing banner ads, and we're doing retargeting banner ads, and then we're doing content advertising. What's great about digital is if a campaign is not working, we literally can change it and put those dollars elsewhere. This just gives you a couple of samples. Um, one of the things that we are actively involved with is TripAdvisor. Our destination wasn't on TripAdvisor. It is part pay to play. So we are on TripAdvisor, and then it also has a lot of user content that comes to that. But before we were there, um, our destination was, was not being presented on TripAdvisor. This gives you an example of one of our niche advertisements. Um, Cornell um, Lab of Orthology, a lot of birders watch this. What is critical about this is any bird that they're looking for, if it's a bird that can be seen in our destination, that's when our ad will pop up. So our ad will not pop up on any of birds that are not known to our area, either through the migration or permanently that come here. 
And just to give you an idea of the advertising, we spent $48,000 on advertising. We had almost 22 million impressions, 81,000 clicks. Those are people that click to watch a video, to go to a landing page, to go to our website. And it, the average was 59 cents per click that we got out of that the, as a, a return on investment. You know, a lot of people know that we do publications, but what people don't realize is digital advertising is just to get people to pique their interest about our destination. Normally, that's not going to that's not going to drive them to visit and and plan their trip. What is really critical is our website and our publications. So you see that we put a lot of energy into producing quality publications to make sure this is at the end of the day we need to get these publications in their hands or get them to our website. Those are the two main objectives for our advertising. So here's the results from um, our website last year. We had almost a half. We had over a half a million visitors to our website. That's an increase of 15 percent over 2014. A 60% increase in mobile users. Our website is um, responsive design. So regardless of how you go to our website, it will adjust to that uh, your phone or to your desktop. This is interesting. You know, people are still wanting destination guides. 16,785 people went to our destination guide page. So they are either downloading the guide, looking at it electronically, or requesting the guide. So that tells you how important those guides are. In our world, uh, photography is critical. And in the days of not having a professional photographer on our staff, it's very costly to get photography. It's hard to find somebody that can do good travel and tourism shots. Since we've had a professional photographer on our staff, we now have 30,000 images in our collection. We added 10,000 last year. Uh, we provide a lot of the images for businesses, and a lot of magazines contact us, books. If you go to the Applebee's in Chesterton, they're using our photography on their walls. So we are the go-to people for the county in terms of photography. The statistic I'd like to focus on in terms of social media, um, just as important as photography is also videos, and we have uh, invested heavily in uh, video production. You can see the, the statistics on our video views, 81,906 views, which is up 3% from the previous year. Another thing is, you know, again, our goal is to get people here. The Dunes is the driver, but we want to get them to shake up the sand south of the Dunes. We have the, uh, a Dunes Deal coupon program. 40,000 are printed. 35,000 are handed out at the State Park gate to people that they have. Uh, if they're not a pass holder, those are considered visitors. And um, we had 22 businesses participate. The redemption was anywhere from 15 to 300. We had a Valparaiso restaurant said it was the best coupon program that they have participated in. So we're, again, trying to drive visitation through the businesses' doors. Uh, many of you know about the three-day challenge. I know Laura has taken it with her family. Um, we launched this in June of 2014. The challenge for us is um, it's not our product, so we have to still figure out if the success of it. So one of the things is we've said to people, if you do it and come into our office, you'll get a free decal or sticker. Since 2014, we've passed out 6,177 decals. In 2015, there was 9,000 video views and almost uh, 12,500 people that went to the landing page. On gross sales for t-shirts just in 2015, it was $24,000 in gross t-shirts. One of the best marketing tools that we have is the visitor center. That's where we have an opportunity to actually interact directly with those visitors that are in our destination. It was by far a record-breaking year for us. We had 88,653 visitors. That's a 14% increase. I'm not so sure that we're going to be able to beat that this year. And then you can look at the number of business calls that our, our front desk staff has, is answering. We have 46 countries in our visitor center, and the number one international country that's visiting year after year is Germany. Uh, each year we work with the University of Florida to do a conversion study because at the end of the day, I don't have a cash register. I'm not selling our activities guide. We're not selling you to be able to use our website. So how do we track the success of what we're doing? And the only way we can do that at this point is through a conversion study. So 64% of visitors who travel to Porter County uh, after they received our information. So that's our conversion rate. 74% said our uh, information was essential or important in planning their trip. 16% increased the length of their time because of our information. 17% increased the amount of money they spent. And 30% of visitors added an additional attraction or activity because of our information. 16% of the visitors used our information to select a hotel. 
27% of those stayed two to three days, and 20% stayed four plus days. When you look at our website statistics, the number one page that visitors are going to is our lodging pages. And then another way we can track that is that we've had some hoteliers that have looked at the back end of their hotel, of their website, and they can see that we're linking people are coming from our website to their website. So we have other ways that we can track the success of the hotel side of it. Another important factor is for us to get free publicity on Porter County. And in uh, 2015, we had 367 articles and broadcast on our destination, which equated to $1.3 million. We reached an additional of 6.4 million people than the previous year. So that is much more valuable to us when we get articles written in USA Today or Midwest Living um, or Fox News. So that's what we're always striving to do is get that free publicity. So what does the future look like taking a peek into 2016? We are, we are doing a lot of different research. Uh, most of our research is done collaboratively. And so we're continuing to do our conversion study. This is the first year we're doing a website conversion study to really see how our website is converting economically for our area. I just came back from the University of Florida doing a research uh, on smart technology for marketing and product development, and that's the future in terms of what we're doing. And then we've also worked with uh, IUPUI on a quality of place study. 2016, if most people know, this is a huge year for anniversaries. Our state is having an anniversary, national parks, state parks, and we're having our 30th anniversary. What we've decided is our role is to communicate all the great events that are going on around these anniversaries, so we have a special anniversary page on our website. And then we are the ones that have been working with the state on anything that they're doing in all 92 counties. We have been the, the group that they go to. So there will be a big uh, torch run in October, and we've been coordinating uh, that project with the state. Another project that they're doing in, in honor of 200 years is they have life-size bisons. Uh, we have purchased one for the visitor center, and that will be painted in August, and it will be in honor of the Native Americans, and it will be permanently on display outside the, the visitor center. The Dunes Kennedy Key Trail, the, the state park, the part of the trail that's from the state park to the visitor center is being completed in April. Porter is doing their final leg of the trail, and that will be dedicated hopefully in July. And then hopefully most of you have been following the new sport resort that's going to be developed in uh, the city of Portage. The developer um, has read the CSL study and uh, understands how valuable outdoor fields are to Porter County, and they are willing to operate and maintain the outdoor fields as outlined in the CSL study. So this is a real game changer in terms of a project, in terms of how it's going to impact us economically. And then our final thoughts are, um, we have a lot of, uh, you know, our job is to bring in visitors and extend their stay, but we want the residents to be excited about what they have in their own county. And so a lot of the materials I showed you, the visitor guides, the website, we encourage our residents to take advantage of us. So when their friends and relatives come into the area, they will showcase our area first. We also remind residents, don't let your uh, friends stay with you. Make sure they stay at a hotel. So um, this book summarizes a lot of what I just talked about, so I hope everybody did have a chance to get that. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Questions? one of the things that we have done is because we have so many international visitors, we have a piece that we're translating into nine languages. Right now we've got German, a German piece, a Spanish piece, and then Fra uh, French, China, Chinese, Italian, all those are on board to be done in the next uh, couple of weeks. So one of the things we're trying to do is make sure that we have the resources in their languages 
which is going to help them with their with their stay. And already we have seen the benefits of that. So our biggest thing is how do you get past that language barrier? And so we've highlighted the most critical thing for the county of Oakland. Can we get your name for the record, sir? Thank you. Okay. Anyone? Else? No? Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank I you. Well, it. And, and I think that the, one of the best things that's helped the, the tourism is the coordination of, of the center with, with the state park, the national mm -hmm. park, and you guys there. And everybody works in harmony, and it really, it really is a a great place. You know, we really do, and I don't think people realize that it's just a one-stop shop, and, and we're doing a great job. Hopefully we can secure the funding to, to redevelop the, the visitor center, and that's another project we're working on. Sure. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Matt Wilson, uh, Fair Board President. Fair recap for 2016. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. President. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, well, fair season heats up here in the summer. I figured I'd come and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Matt Wellsand. Um, I was involved with Fair Board and 4-H for the last 10 years. I was actually 4-H Council President uh, last two years and then continued on the Exec Board for Fair Board, and it is definitely one of my passions. Um, Today, if you have questions, let me know, but I just wanted to give you a few updates on maintenance issues and projects that we're doing and tell you a little bit about what's upcoming for the fair. Fair dates are July 21st to the 30th. Um, first weekend, we have three big concerts of Chris Jansen and Low Cash for the Thursday. Cole Swindell is the 22nd for the Friday. And then Alabama is going to be the Saturday concert. Um, all sales are doing very well right now. Um, all all good concerts, um, family oriented. Um, with that, we have estimated budget of around two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars to be putting back into the fairgrounds this upcoming um, maintenance season, April to probably July twentieth. <laughs> so um, we have concrete work to be done. Um, road work in the camping areas, we upgraded a few spots last year and we're going to be continuing that. Um, sound system in the show arena, we're working with uh, Expo Center to get that um, upgraded for auction use and for the shows. Um, we are also going to be remodeling the buggy wheel restroom, there's the restroom behind the buggy wheel, um, totally remodel that. Putting glass doors on the Expo Center. Possibly finding a solution for the air conditioning in the 4-H building, uh, making that permanent. Um, and then we are going to, starting next week, start painting the 4-H building and all the livestock barns and the um, horse arena tower. So it should start looking um, a lot brighter out there. So um, with that, um, I'm working well with Lurie Daly and the Expo Center, 4-H Council. Um, hopefully future projects, um, possibly um,
campground expansion and improvements with that, <coughs> and also with the livestock show arena, creating more office space and um, maybe improvements for other events throughout the year using that space. So, um, other than that, if you have questions, please let me know. It's a pleasure working for the fair and for everybody in the county to come and enjoy it. So, thank you guys. Hey, Matt, yeah. um, I just wanted to point out we're we're sort of moving forward, getting closer on the animal shelter. Right. We are going to be going down by where the campground is. We, that's where we have to go grab the sewer okay. and bring it up. We also have to grab water and bring it up. Okay. So before you guys do anything out there in that campground area, we're, we will be getting with you to talk about timing. Okay. Uh, but be, you know, you might want to hold on anything over there until we. It wouldn't be until June until okay. we really know what roads it's just minor patching and making sure that the roads are level so okay that you will be in construction by then anyway yeah we we hope to get our utilities and everything run before okay. the fair and we have plenty of time to repair whatever we need to repair but we're getting to the point here in the next 45 days where we should have some schedules and then we'll be sitting down with you folks and working through the timing of everything so we're all on the same page and okay. uh, working together out there All right. okay thank you for that yeah looking forward to it yes thank you guys so it's <laughs> fun time out at the fair thank you thanks man thank vicky urbanic the auditor we're going to talk about a workshop on tax abatement money smart week mm -hmm. that's every week isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Only sure. i just wanted to give you an update on two projects that the auditor's office is involved with. This coming Friday, we're going to host a tax abatement workshop uh, here in this room. Our guest speaker is going to be DLGF examiner Steve McKinney. And we're going to go over all of the, the changes in tax abatements, um, how tax abatements work, how they're calculated, uh, and some statistics about Porter County's abatements. Then beginning on Saturday is National Money Smart Week. This is a um, national campaign that was founded by the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago that promotes fiscal literacy and personal finance responsibility. And the auditor's office is a partner in Money Smart Week, and so we have these posters that we have put up. And as a partner, we um, are to present programs, and we decided to start off small this year, and so we're sponsoring an art contest for kids called Saving Money Is and the kids are supposed to submit a drawing, either an original one or they color in our piggy bank design, and then fill in the blank with what saving money means to them. So later on this week, you should start seeing lots of piggy bank designs uh, down on that wing of the hallway, and it's all part of Money Smart Week. So Great. I just wanted to give you that update on two fun projects <coughs> we're working on. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rogers, uh, Oak Ridge, Collier Lodge Grant. Paperwork. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. We're here um, because we were successfully awarded fifteen thousand dollars to support planning of the historic preservation of Collier Lodge under the Kankakee Valley Historical Society. So you have three documents um, to review and approve today and sign. Those are one, the grant agreement um, sent to us by the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. The second is the architect contract with Schmidt and Associates. They will be leading the planning process for the, um, for the project as well as the um, grant administration contract uh, for the services of my firm, Kerner Blue. And um, so with that, I would answer any questions that you may have and then also allow um, Mary Hudson a, a question, an opportunity. Great. Any more questions? It, I think it's great. Yeah, congratulations. You just keep going and going. That's, that's what it takes. Um, Mary Hudson <coughs> and my husband, um, John Hudson, he's the president and we're the co-founders of Kankakee Valley Historical Society. I just want to say thank you, thank you for um, working with us uh, all of this time and for supporting us and now partnering with us. Uh, this is the first step 
this is the first step in our um, ability to be able to restore what I call the grand old lady <laughs> that's been standing all these years to her formal um, glory. And we see it as a keystone of South County, so it'll be a lovely draw, as tourism was talking, to begin to draw to that part of the county. So just thank you so much, and on behalf of the board, all the volunteers that work, and our members. No. We thank you for what you're doing for the people of Porter County. Yep. Uh, you need a motion? John, did you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 I'm going to thank you guys for the patience. It's been a long haul. Uh, it's been a long haul. Uh, it's been a long haul. It's been a long haul. Finally got a brand writer finally successful all these years, so I want to thank you for working with us, not giving up. Well, good things are worth waiting for. Uh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> it's the right time. Yeah. So we need a motion for all three. I will make the motion to approve the three documents. There's a second? second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, second by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, this one's up your alley, and it's got the resolution concerning assignment of tax sale certificate to the city of Portage. Yeah, we already we're done this, haven't we? Yeah, we're just cleaning up a little bit here, uh, taking an additional tax cycle on this tax certificate that <clears throat> we're signing to the city of Portage. Just ask for you to uh, approve it, and uh, we can get this over to Portage, and it can become their problem. I'll make a motion. Motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are your Schneider's not here? Oh, golly. I didn't. Well, we never do anything. I was guessing. <laughs> okay. Office holders, department heads. David James, highway supervisor. We're going to award bids for asphalt and liquid bituminous. Are you limping? No, I'm always limping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 32 marathons. Glad to know we're not working it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> um, we're here because uh, we rebid the uh, asphalt plant mix and we got better numbers. Good. And so, out of both, um, I recommend that we accept Reith Riley and Walsh and Kelly for the bituminous plant mix. We're probably going to be able to do another mile and a half to a mile and three quarters with the rebid. So, that really helps. I mean, that really helps. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation of the highway superintendent? So moved. Motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor, second voice saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And the second one that we opened last uh, meeting was the uh, liquid bituminous for the chip and seal process. And we had two bidders for those uh, one bitmap products out of um, Ashley, Indiana, and asphalt materials out of Warsaw, Indiana. Um, asphalt materials came in with the lowest bid. And I recommend that you accept asphalt materials for our chip seal oil. Is there a motion to uh, endorse the recommendation of the highway supervisor? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion Thank you very much. I Thank believe you. we've all got a copy of your road list. And whenever you want to meet, let me know. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity, uh, Mr. President, to throw out there for discussion. I know that the budget the budget this year when we were going through the budgeting um, the funding for the paving portion for the highway department was taken out of major moves we moved it from seed it um, because of the pricing that's coming in uh, and where we're at in the oil cycle right now I would really like to maybe uh, have us discuss uh, taking another million dollars out of the major moves to do more paving this year. I think it's advantageous for us with the pricing and everything. But I just wanted to throw it out to the to you two uh, for discussion if we want to talk about it. Um, I'm just throwing it out there. If not, that's fine too. Vicki, what do we have in that fund right now, the major moves? Six point four million in the balance. Okay. okay. Just as a way of a little history, the major moves money, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, came to us from the sale of the Indiana Toll Road. And uh, Porter County was one of the few counties, I think, in, in the whole seven-county district that said, we're not going to throw that money away. We put the money in the bank and called it major moves money, and we assigned a million dollars a year to be used for, for the roads. Um, 
and, and that's what we've done. And I think Commissioner Good has a great idea for this year, especially because of the, the, the decrease in the petroleum prices and, and where we are with, with what we can do with what we have. So I, I would in, endorse uh, that uh, we're obviously going to have to take it by the council for, for their approval, but, but I, I think it's a very worthwhile idea, and I think we could go a long way to, to make some inroads. They're going to be here set up and working anyway, so uh, there's some economy to scale that we gain there too. Do you want to make the motion, John? No, go ahead. I make the motion that we uh, uh, do an additional for $1 million um, for the major moves, from the major moves account for additional paving this year. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now, David, we still have your other additional from the budget that you need to come in front of us, too. So let's get that on the agenda for next, and then let's start working on our list again. And now we got now we got a meeting to meet about for our roads. Yeah. And, and Thank just, you. just as a way of questioning, when you talk to these people that just got the contracts, if we do increase it by that much, are they willing to maybe uh, increase their prices downward a little bit? Right. <laughs> Always try. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sunday June, voter registration, emergency polling locations. Emergency. Okay. I'm going to show up today. So. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon. Sorry, <laughs> looking good. <laughs> What's the big emergency? Um, we uh, received a phone call last week from the National Guard Armory. I'm sure you guys all seen in the papers all the lead problems. Well, they thought they were hit. They had a meeting with the state, and they thought it, everything would be cleared up and ready to go for the May election. They found out last week there is no plan of action according to the state, and they have no idea when they're going to be abated. Um, so we, they can't allow anybody in that building because of the lead. So we lost a point location, and we've got a new point location that is willing to have us there. Thank you, Mr. Good. <laughs> he helped me track down. Uh, it's actually the Hampton Inn and Suites. Um, it's only a mile from the National Guard Army. It is still in the Center 17 um, precinct location. We got the letters ready to go. The election board said yes, take it to the commissioners. So here I am. Um, it's about 1,200 voters it's going to affect. Um, so we need to get this, you know, of course, approved as fast as we can. It's, it's up to you guys. Um, so we can get the letters out and get all the voters notified. Okay. Questions? It's not my precinct. No, it's not. <laughs> you just help me with phone numbers and track people down. <laughs> I make the motion. Motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor of signifying saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Maybe you can get them to throw in the free buffet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. It's costly, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'll have to talk after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, Matt Steckley, <laughs> facilities director. Nice. Free proposal for the animal shelter, Mitsubishi Coast uh, batteries for the Sheriff's Department, Happy Moran, Life Safety Inspection, Expo Center, Fire and Security Proposal, Jail and uh, Ansel Systems, and Cold Digital Audio Project for the Commissioner's Papers. Good afternoon. And yeah, there's quite a bit on there. Um, so I'm actually, my paperwork is in order, so I plan on going in that order. Um, starting with the tree proposal, I know we did this two weeks ago. Um, I <clears throat> reached out to the three vendors. Even though the scope of work was the same, there was one key word that changed, um, and that was manageable size wood. So we're delivering the wood to the Valpo compost site. That way the community can also come and get free firewood. Uh, the word firewood, the word manageable size was where the variation came in. One vendor said he's cutting it to 16 inches. It'll literally be able to fit in a fireplace. They just have to split it. Another vendor said five, six foot sections. So I went across the board to all three vendors. Nothing changed except quote your, your price for three-foot sections. So after that, everything came in all said and done. Glover's originally was cutting to 16 inches, his price originally for 20. I told him bring it down to or bring it up to three. So now we've got three final quotes and Glover's tree service is the lowest. I make the motion to approve Glover's tree service. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. When are they going to do that, do you know? So we're literally uh, meeting tomorrow and we're getting started. 
they they know let's go absolutely don't forget to let us know before the demolition starts. yeah no I, I've got I've been in contact with Dave and Andy everyone's will coordinate yep um, Mitsubishi quote this is uh, with the help and assistance of CJ, director of 911. So he reached out to Mitsubishi, by the way. The, I have the proposal for new batteries, but we're going to put that on hold. Some other possible direction we could take that is going to work out better for the county long term. But for now, this is in regards to the jail shutdown that is coming up. It's scheduled for May 13th with Linehart. The issue was. We were afraid 911 would not be able to carry the two 45 minute shutdowns. CJ reached out to Mitsubishi. They're bringing in a trailer full of batteries that will power 911 during these shutdowns and ensure no interruption in service. The total, they have an option in there for 1118, but we're not going to go with that option. That was for our after hours installation. We're doing this normal business hours. $5,759. I reached out to two of my local vendors to source this battery trailer, and um, they were unsuccessful. So I still tried to get a better price, and this is what it is. Um, upon approval, CJ has been notified that this is his baby. He will be uh, responsible for calling in Mitsubishi before May 13th, having this installed and making sure that his world and his 911 center is, is good to go. And to expand on your conversation, <clears throat> You're also going to be looking for uh, an alternative to move away from the batteries to where we could use a... Correct. Batteries last three hours brand new. We're looking to, for 911, to have their own generator. The proposal I've seen from CJ, I believe, for these batteries was $47,000. I'm looking for a small generator to actually power 911 separately from the one that powers now the sheriff's, the jail, and 911. So I think in terms of... In, 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 of investment every dollar into a generator that can run 24 7 is that's that's way better to put the money into something like that than batteries that still only last three hours so that's kind of something i'm working on natural gas fired correct correct it's just the right way to go in another 911 centers that's kind of the benchmark standard okay okay i'll make the motion for the approval of the temporary batteries from mitsubishi electric mm -hmm. Motion and a second before we vote. Whose budget is this coming from? <laughs> we buy it. <laughs> see it. I don't see CJ jumping out. <laughs> I've got a full agenda here. You want to take one for the team? Um, how much? Okay, well, the other thing maybe we ought to look at is building maintenance because it is a maintenance issue. Okay, hopefully you guys can come to some kind of agreement, maybe 50-50 or 60-40. Yeah. And as, you know, I'm, I'm on board now four months, and um, as time goes forward, um, my budget will become more clear where those funds come from, so that's something that I'm going to really improve on as we go forward, knowing where it's coming from. Okay, we have a motion and a second to do the uh, battery rental. Uh, for the 911 center. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. F.E. Moran. F.E. Moran. We are already contracted um, portfolio wide with F.E. Moran to do our fire and life safety t annual testing of the sprinkler systems. Expo was one of those that uh, was the stepchild. They were doing it on their own, um, paying for it on their own, and their vendor went out of business. So we brought F.E. Moran and they quoted it us. We use the same leverage that we get for the rest of our portfolio. This is simply just, hey, on paper, we're going to start doing the expo as well. When that, when this agreement comes up for uh, renewal, we will tuck this one into the master. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion is second. Again, uh, this fund will come from the same place it did before, Lori, or uh, who was paying them before? And is the dollar amount about the same as it was? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and keep paying them. <laughs> All those in favor, say you're saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Fire and security proposal. General uh, Ansel system. Met with vendors on site. Um, again, just one last time, I actually met with them together. That way there's no... We're all three of us are looking at the same thing. Proposals came back. I had some questions about Fox Valley with their initial proposal, and once they were on site with us, all of a sudden it changed. 
So coarsening was the lowest at 99.41.36. All of them quoted the same. It's apples to apples for that Ansel system and to get rid of the water suppression system that I discussed last time. Questions? So we have a $9,900 bid and a $45,000 bid. F.E. F- Moran was just going to sub it out. They, do, they didn't even want to deal with it. I'll, I'll make the motion for course, and they're a reputable company. Yeah, so. second. Yeah, and again, where's the money coming from? I mean, we, it's okay to put these things out there, but we got to be able to pay for them. So yeah. we, we need to... Um, it's like building maintenance. Building maintenance, or I wonder if the jail or the sheriff has any funding. I mean, it's in his, uh, he still has money in the uh, refinance bond that that might be used here. So, okay, we'll make we'll make uh, we got a motion and a second, and we'll make it con- <laughs> contingent on arriving at the appropriate fund. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, Cold Digital, audio project for this chamber. Not only for this chamber to renovate this one due to the speaker issues, the sound issues, but also to install a new system in 102A where the new... St- the room downstairs. The stormwater, is that what we're calling the stormwater board? So um, it's a whole new audio system and then renovating this and updating this one, a really old system. Um, I invited three, only two responded, Van Osdale and Cold Digital and Audio. Um, a lot of time into this. Sharon from IT put a lot of time into this. We needed her signature and for her to sign off. Um, Rob Cole is actually the one that's walking around this room while this meeting's going on to make sure he really has a feel for the deficiencies currently. Um, but it, what it comes down to is I, I believe Sharon's 100%. I'm 100% with this. Um, Cole does a lot of really big university stadiums, mega churches. So when he looked at this, it was really no big deal. So um, the only concern Sharon and I have that we want to bring before you is that um, the people that enter minutes, it's, things are going to change. It's new technology. So we're really, you know, we may get kicked back on they may have to learn something new, but technology-wise, the outcome, it's, it's really solid. We're, everyone's going to notice a huge difference. And I know I want to get going on this um, for the May 9th meeting. Um, sure. Do you, do you have any reservations about this? Or? Um, I met with Matt with Digital, and uh, um, it does appear that coal can meet the needs that we have. I did have concern, as Matt brought up, that the users were not part of this, so um, any issues they currently have or any needs that they may have may not have been addressed. Um, Honestly, because it deals with audio and mixing and microphones and fade and gain and all of those types of technologies that are not real familiar to most people, I was concerned that we couldn't do any kind of software demo with the users to even evaluate if they're going to be capable of using this. So that's a big concern that I have. Um, Concern with training and support going further because there wasn't anything in the contract about it. So um, other than that, I knew there was only two quotes, so I didn't know if that would become an issue with the commissioners, but that's really not my ultimate concern. Well, there are uh, a number of uh, meetings held in these chambers, and uh, you're right. Most people want to come in and flip a switch and be done with it. Um, Then you have the tinkerers who are going to sit there and play with everything for the whole meeting. Um, So I address that, uh, Commissioner Evans. Actually, this system will be set up. um, We've got unlimited support built into this. They will be here once the system's installed. What we're planning on doing is tailoring it, tweaking it. They'll be here for one council meeting, one commissioner meeting, because it's a different format, more mics, more people. The goal, and what I'm being told, is that this will be set it and forget it, that we might need to raise this mic or lower this mic, but it's not... I'm being told that this is going to be set up where it's turnkey. There shouldn't be all this messing around with you it. You've got the Planning Commission, you've got the BZA, you got the Alcohol Beverage Commission, you've got a, a lot of other boards that, that meet in these chambers. So I, 
that I think the challenge is going to be to get all those people together to educate them to how, how to use the system. How did we do it in the past? <coughs> well, that's what happened. Is in the past the people did whatever they wanted yeah. to do. But the problem yeah. is staff has come and go. There's been no additional training done. So when the new staff comes in, they're just winging it, mm -hmm. and we have a mess. So I, I, maybe if we could get a list together from you know of all the users, and then say we're going to have training you know this day and this day, and please if you want to use the system, come in and, and get the training. Otherwise, um, we need some way to lock them out because because it, it goes from great to the garbage can in no time. So it's if we have too many fingers in the pot, we're going to have problems, especially if they don't know what they're doing. And this also opens up the classroom downstairs to have meetings that we can record that's one of the things that we're lacking right systems. now. So if they were trained on one, they can use the other because they're both the same. And, that, and that's a whole question for the commissioners to decide, do we even want to do that room downstairs? I know that's always been a goal of yours. But yeah, I, I think it's a good idea because it, it does give us an alternative place that, that we can have a meeting. I mean, there have been times when the, the election board or somebody has this room scheduled already and we can't do anything and we have to go someplace else and 307 is not going to be an alternative anymore. So I think that's... Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I discussed, Scott brought to my attention and I brought up with Cole was the possibility of a mobile type unit so that once the stormwater uh, construction is finished, they may want to have a meeting that needs to be recorded or in the past when the council or the commissioners go on the road to have town hall meeting type things and they need to be recorded and they're at a park or something, um, Cole Digital's product does have a component to it we would have to buy some additional hardware but it's built into where we could go with that type of mobile unit it obviously wouldn't be as robust as the units here but it would at least be able to capture that audio so that those could be shared with the public so that's a, that's a good yeah, I'm guessing that's not available with what we have now <laughs> it is it, it's not available there's nothing available what we have now what we have now needed to be upgraded about four years ago but okay. the company that bid that gave the additional quote that's available with them as well but it wasn't part of their original quote well I think we should go for it new technology I'm tired of listening to these microphones tick and hum and people not be able to hear each other yeah and it's been band-aided and band-aided for a long long time so it's, it's, it's more than due so. I'll make the motion and this will come out of where are we thinking about taking this out of Building maintenance or CCD or um, in the past where we take this from sure. This system was put in when the building was built. I, I'd like to make a recommendation, uh, Mr. President, that maybe the stormwater advisory group split this with the commissioners. Might be a good oh, that's idea. a good idea for the downstairs. For the downstairs, because yeah. that whole room down there is going to be <coughs> set up for stormwater. We're going to be having maps on the walls. We're going to that's going to be sort of our. Uh, nerve center so to speak down there. And that board is interactive and it's a, it's yep. really a nice yep. feature. Yeah. It really works well. Yep. That board's per that room's perfect for that board. Oh yeah. gosh, I thought it was better for storing boarding machines. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Did I say that? Oh sorry. Okay, is there a motion? So move. Motion and second, second to uh, approve call digital for both the uh, venues uh, of the the roadshow thing uh, you know that's just during the election time but these microphones on the end here or some kind of handheld unit for yeah. public meetings yeah. also oh, need to be addressed okay. Yeah. okay all those in favor signify saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed same sign motion carries thank you thank you there was quite a thank bit you. so appreciate it mm -hmm. Alton Yuri, Portage Township she, Assessor no, she went through okay um, Scott McDonald Opera House Director Coming for the curtain call is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Respite House, yes. Dura Sequenza, Quen Kenya Moore, and Andrew Wolverton. Yes. Um, with Respite House, they had a concert on Saturday for their fundraiser. Um, I do know that in their contract, it said that we would be doing uh, ticket proceeds one thousand dollars for them, uh, and I just want to make sure that you have that report in front of you. So we'll be cutting them a check for about six thousand uh, dollars as per their contract. Very good. Keep them coming. Fine place to have a fundraiser. Yes. 
and Mitch was very, very, very happy with how everything went there. So staff took good care of him, and they made some money, which is great. Um, Duo Sequenza, that is uh, Deb Silver. She does classical music in our venue. Um, we, same sort of thing, we cut her a check based on ticket proceeds and remove her rent from that. So we owe her uh, $449.53 from her March concert. And then um, our other one is for a uh, lease of the Opera House for a wedding on October the 1st. They have their rehearsal scheduled for September the 17th and it's $1,000. Uh, revenue coming to us for a wedding. She's already paid for her deposits. Um, and then our final contract there is uh, for Andrew Wolverton who led the uh, spring musical camp with about 13 kids and he was contracted at $600 by the previous business director. Okay, you want to take them one at a time or all at once? I think we can do them all at once, can we? I think so. I'll make the motion for um, the contract presented to us by the Opera House today. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Scott. And Scott is our um, interim director now. I, I should have said that. I'm sorry. No, um, correspondence. We have the Highway Department Annual Operational Report on file. We have a request for approval of official bond for David James, Florida County Highway Supervisor. The bond is in the amount of $8,500. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor, signal for saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Request for approval from uh, Portside Ministries to pray for people on the courthouse grounds on Monday and Wednesday from 8 a.m. to noon. They will also be handing out books, Bibles, and daily devotional booklets. The City of Valpo has already given their permission to use their sidewalk. Is there a motion? I make the motion. Motion. There second. A second. And motion is second. All those in favor, sign up by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion okay. carries. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, request uh, additional appropriations, commissioners, from the 1172.2294, $317,197 to account 3950 contractual. This is to replace additional appropriations earlier approved by the Council of uh, Hospital Interest for the County Airport Grant. I'll make the motion. Motion. Is second. There a second. Motion is second. All those in favor, second by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, once again, before we uh, finish up here, we want to make sure that everyone understands our next meeting will be on May the 10th, not May the 3rd. May the 10th, not May the 3rd. Anyone wishing to address this body? Anyone wishing to address this body? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. To, but we can't. It's inside the corporate city limits of the city of Valparaiso, and they're responsible for their own roadways. So, if we did that, we would be in everybody's uh, backyard trying to fix every problem in every city and town in in the county. So we have to we have to limit our resources to those areas that that we have jurisdiction over. So, sorry. Anyone else wish to address this body? Okay. Oh, Scott, Scott has. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Scott. Okay. Just uh, the commissioners in working with the HR department, Pam, and the auditor's office, the uh, commissioners are going to 
um, where I'm asking the commissioners to approve a, a letter that I think I got all of you to take a look at. Uh, basically, just to the department heads and the elected officials uh, clarifying uh, some issues with uh, when employees are, are no longer with us, with their dealing with their payoffs and their and their health insurance and how those things are worked out. So, just a heads up for the department heads and the elected officials that a memo from, or I'll be asking the commissioners to approve a, a memorandum or a short letter on making sure we're doing that all consistently across the board uh, with all of our employees. Good. Good. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Well, last time, anybody else wish to address this body? Going, going, we stand in recess. We're going to reconvene as the Port of Cali Stormwater Advisory Board. Yeah, but I'm If you guys could hold your questions, we're going to go ahead with the stormwater management board because everybody's waiting, and then you'll have time at the end of this to come up. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
I think what did that tell you? <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> 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 That's because they're all kind of like... They're all true. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, we'll call this one the Port County uh, Stormwater Advisory Board together. We can skip the pledge because we already did it just before you got here, okay? Uh, so we need approval of the minutes from the March 15th, 2016 meeting. So moved. Motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And now we're going to look at some uh, truck bids. Yes. Uh, we received four of them. And I guess to explain how we went about doing this process real quickly, I worked with um, Attorney Scott on this and we basically went on the website and they build a truck on the website for Ford and Chevy and we went around to four dealerships. Um, it, it's a standard crew, I don't want to say crew cab, extended cab, uh, work truck version, uh, very basic. The only two options I think I added on both of them were the spray in bed liner for protection and also a towing package because um, possibility of towing light loads. So we took it around to four dealerships um, and Bozak Chevrolet up in Burns Harbor, Lakeshore Ford up in Burns Harbor area, and then two here in um, Valparaiso, and that was uh, Sir uh, GMC Buick and also Curry Ford. Out of all of those bids that we received, um, Bozak Chevrolet was at least coming in at $28,900. Uh, to explain the ones that we sent out to you last night, a correction came in this morning, and that was from Curry Ford, and they had to increase their price, and I kind of figured that might be coming. Ford is in the process of changing over their uh, assembly line to the 2017, and the prices went up. So he had to resubmit a new price on that. So. Our lowest bid that we have right now is Bozak Chevrolet at 28900 Questions? I'd also like to point out, too, when we were putting the stormwater program together, uh, I think we had had budgeted more vehicles than what we're actually uh, finalizing on, so we're... I, we're looking that we may eventually have to get one more, um, possibly this year. Uh, but originally we had budgeted for, if I remember correctly, three. Right. And I think at the max that we're probably looking at is really going to be two. Yep. Just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Was it a consideration or have you thought about maybe putting a snow plow on it as well? They asked us if we wanted that equipment and I did not. As a matter of fact, one of them did say, do you want it? This is Time to tell me. I mean, we could look at that if you so desire. I'm just thinking about the use that you're going to have for it, and you know, that's going to occur in the winter as well as in the summer. I, I do make the recommendation not to put a snow plow on. We've never had that issue. Okay. However, uh, as an aftermarket thing, I didn't see any mention of strobe lights on this, and uh, I strongly urge you to get uh, some ropes on the truck. I'm working on that one. Okay. Uh, Highway Garage will help yeah, you with that. Yeah, that's or, the the sheriff, or the Sheriff's Garage, garage. either one. Yeah. yeah. I, that's I mean, they're much better, cheaper sources. Yeah. Too. yeah. There's that's still an expense in getting the kit, but mm -hmm. it's so important to have those on those vehicles. Okay. Is there I'll a motion? make a motion on the uh, RNL Chevy uh, GM. Bozak. Bozak to uh, used to be on the dollar short for the quote for the was it twenty eight thousand what twenty eight thousand nine hundred twenty eight thousand nine hundred second motion and a second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed same sign motion carries I'll just make mention that uh, I bought a truck in two thousand six and it was twenty seven five ninety from uh, the former Harbor Arnell Bullstack <laughs> so. Uh, They've really done good by us. Yep. Okay, project updates. Um, real quickly, before I get into this list, I just wanted to mention our two employees sitting back there. You all know Rich Hudson with the MS4, and then we have Rich 
Graver back there, who's our uh, project manager now. Um, and Rich compiled this list of items um, he's been working on. These are going to be extensions of the drainage board projects, such as currently they're working on the Pleasant Township Ditch Arm um, 7. If you have any questions on this, Rich would probably Rich Graver would be the best person to ask on these. Um, Martin Ditch, there we're going to be working on Deer Manor subdivision, uh, division arm to Parker, also Sturdy Road Phase Two. Uh, that has been going on. Stormwater is going to be funding Phase Two of that. The equipment is, I know the uh, material, I should say, is being delivered now. They're hoping to start up around the first week of May to finish that. That's for the drainage there at Division and Sturdy Road. Um, we're just waiting on the uh, Rule 5 compliance letter on that. Um, Heimberg Ditch, just as a KRBC project that the drainage board was working on, and Ludington Arm 10, Phillips Road 300 South. All of those were drainage board projects. Some of the remaining restoration projects that they have going on were Pleasant Township Ditch, Drazer Park, Gustafson Ditch, um, Smith Concrete Plant to Babcock Road and then Kroll Ditch and Wheeler Landfill. Those are two that they're working on for finishing up the restore, restoration. Excuse me. Future projects that we've been looking at. Dave Burris gave me quite an extensive list um, because I've been asking for projects in North, Central, and South, and they gave me a list of them. And I guess to read off of what um, Rich gave me here real quickly, um, Swanson Lamport and Liberty Township, uh, some Tree clearing needs to be done, Tra channel clearing, excuse me, Carver Ditch up in Pine Township, Burglar Arm to Duck Creek and Union Township, Cobb Ditch, Morgan and Porter, Porter Township. Um, Rich and I walked that and drove around and looked at all of that on Friday. Um, that is one project we're going to need to go on. Flint Lake Garden Terrace, Washington Township, some church tree clearing and channel cleaning and also Bry Ditch, um, 625 West, some bank repair. Those are going on currently. We're also working on two current watershed studies and we've been talking, matter of fact, uh, Commissioner Good and I um, and Dave Burst were over at the City of Valparaiso talking to them and that's with um, Stimson Drain in the Parker Ditch and also uh, Hutter Drain that we're working on some um, a watershed study there to see whether or not uh, the capacity is good, what we need to do or what we can do in the future as far as release uh, rates and also work out there. We did try to videotape the, or video the actual drain that was um, running there. It's in a tile and DOZ was overlooking at, and you'll see these pictures here. Uh, Two of those pictures will show plenty of gravel at the bottom of the pipe, and the other picture where you see the water, um, the pipe is actually starting to sag back. There's actually a drop in that pipe. Um, we pretty much told DLZ there's no sense of doing any more videotaping on this. This pipe needs to be replaced. So we are probably going to be starting up um, on that where they're going to be looking at whether or not uh, we need to upsize this pipe um, and doing some engineering analysis on this particular pipe. And currently this Friday, Christy, myself, um, and Pam Courtney, and maybe Dave Burris will be popping in. We're starting interviews for an engineer. We have a couple of candidates that are going to be coming in on Friday to talk to us about that. So we're working on items. There is one item as far as the list of things. This is an emergency one and it's going to get into the uh, next discussion on contractual services. I guess there's a pipe out there at the um, north end of the airport by the north runway that trains Washington Highlands or Washington Square. I can't remember which one of those. Highlands. Highlands. Thank you. It's a 36 inch pipe that has blown out and there's a huge erosion that's exposed quite a few feet of this particular pipe on it. And um, this is one I guess we would like your blessings to be able to go forward and do some emergency repairs on this based off of the hourly rates I'm going to talk about next. So um, this is one Dave brought it to our attention and Rich mentioned it too. Rich, you want to explain that a little bit, can you? 
Um, so that's a pretty good pipe. Unfortunately, it's extremely deep. It's like 19 or 20 feet deep there. I'm on the to to get it out. That's in the little open channel on the right of the airport. Uh, it's been a ruin for a while. Um, and last time we looked at it, the bottom was missing out of it. So it's going to have to be replaced. How old is it? It was put in in about the 80s by the county. It was part of an arm of a regulated drain as a consequence of helping Washington Highlands with the water that was draining from north of two. That was prior to this whole commercial complex. So it's historic. Mm -hmm. It's there. Kyle Keebler's mentioned it many times. Just Should we do the way. contractual services first so you know what you're going to be? I mean, either way, I guess it doesn't make any difference. I, that's fine. I guess this list here, or the ones that I'm about ready to mention to you, I guess, have been approved by the drainage board as part of their annual bids. What they did, and our, I should say the hourly rate bids that were accepted by the drainage board this year, um, the companies that they have are William Beaver Excavating out of Plymouth, GE Marshall out of Valparaiso, Green Line Landscaping Excavating in Couts, Johnson Excavating in, on Long Highway 6 in Valparaiso, k &L Excavating in Couts, M and K excavating and Couts, uh, Mish Excavating Incorporated and Wheatfield, Indiana, RB Sutton and Chesterton and Satoski Brothers in Union Mills, um, Indiana here. They did just provide like the hourly rates in here. I noticed they also have the Iran e verify or whatever it is signed and they also have uh, insurance with them. And uh, there's nine of them I mentioned. I, I did not see that for two of them. I can't remember which two, but these these hourly rates were approved by the drainage board. But since we're in the middle of transitioning, we just felt that that we should bring it back through here sure. and redo it again. So that's why we're doing it. Yeah. Let's let's then first do the the airport project uh, and vote on that, and then vote on the uh, services. I think. Okay. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Okay. Motion is second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. And I'll make the motion on the uh, hourly rates for the contract services. Second, yeah. Motion in the second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. I'd also like to point out um, uh, one of our first projects we did with a combination of ditch fee and the new storm fee. Um, and based off Kevin's work in his office, we secured a uh, Army Corps permit and we ended up cleaning uh, close to four miles of the Crooked Creek outlet into Kankakee River. We also got some money from the Kankakee River Basin, but that's really important because that's a major outlet for our county. That's where all, more than half of our county water goes. And it's real assuring to me, and, and with Kevin and the work of the drainage board, that we got four miles of that uh, cleaned out, and uh, it's, it, it turned out real well. So and that was part of both both pools of money. So um, great job, and, and uh, I, I think that that's uh, we're well on our way. So anything else? Uh, that's all I yeah. Oh, other than real soon. Um, Rich Hudson and Rich Graver have been getting uh, quotes in for surveying equipment, and we're hoping to be back in front of you here real soon with the surveying equipment quote so we can go out and purchase that. With that, we should be off and running, really. We're still doing field work and everything, too. Very good. good. Sounds like it's going well. <laughs> okay, anybody? Anything? Going? Going? We stand in recess. Thank you.